Hi, I'm Carl Glassford, art instructor at Golden West College. Today we're looking at some of the career attributes of an illustrator, a humorous illustrator. Some may say cartoonist, but we'll get back and forth into why that term may be appropriate or not. John Deerstein is uh, a local illustrator. He uh, lives in the area, but his clients uh, range all over the country and probably internationally as well, depending on uh, who sees his work and how he makes contact. And we'll look at how it is that a person can be in uh, Southern California and still have clients in New York and Chicago and Houston, wherever else, by, uh, by the nature of the business of illustration as it, as it is today. John, you've been uh, around for, what, 22 years drawing uh, humorous illustration? That's why, right. why define humorous illustration ver versus cartooning. Well, I, I'm not sure if it's just a, a tactical difference. Uh, there are people in the illustration business and the people that buy illustration uh, call people illustrators, largely. Uh, most of us call ourselves uh, humorous illustrators for ease in communication uh, if people are still con a little bit baffled by what that is I just say cartoonist and that usually settles it the trouble with that is, is that the distinction that that, that has is is that uh, I do the Sunday funnies or yeah. something akin to that which is also not true so you're not necessarily in animation you're not necessarily doing the Sunday funnies or the daily strip cartoon but you're doing humorous illustration that are, appears in magazines or newspaper ads or, or in box uh, packaging, that sort of thing. Another term they sometimes use is stylized realism. Well, that's an interesting term. Uh, realism is something that looks like a photograph only stylized and, and you are right. adding more to it. Humorous, exaggerated, uh, uh, greater than life, that sort of thing. Right. Now, you've, you've gone to a lot of trouble, too, to develop a style. Explain what style is, your style versus somebody else's. Well, I think a style is something that represents, you know, uh, or I would like to think it represents your, a person's whole background, uh, everything that, from when they started to what, from what they learned, how they modified what they learned, how they eclectically took in various uh, and, and remnant pieces of, uh, from other uh, pieces of art that they've looked at, artists they've studied, and use them and sort of become uh, a, whole, a whole of that uh, sort of process. So uh, I would say that the historical elements of education and uh, influence, uh, professional influence, is the reason for that. Another thing is you're doing what you want to do. You could probably do any number of art styles or, or techniques, but you're, you're doing what you really like to do. And I think that's an important point so that right. people don't say, well, I'm going to go where the money is, uh, do what you want to do, and the money tends to follow. Some of the things that you have in your book here, this is a, your portfolio, the, the book that you take to show clients, and, and similar books, uh, your reps in different cities would have something like this. So that if, if I was a client and we were sitting down uh, over my desk and you're now just going to show me some of the things that you have recently done, um, how do you do that? If I'm a client and you're showing me this page what, or this picture, what do you tell me? Well, I'll tell you a little bit about uh, the reason why I did it, which is uh, it was a job uh, that was given to me uh, by a corporation called Mindscape International. They develop uh, educational software for kids. Uh, this piece, I think, was the uh, actually aimed at uh, kids. Oh, between the ages of of eight and thirteen, or something close to that. They wanted to. Uh, it, it had something to do with alliteration. In other words, a kind of a simplistic poetry, which. Uh, phonetically combine the sound of gator with skater. So uh, I illustrated that the way that I thought a kid could relate to it. Now the, the costume is what some person of that age group would be wearing and, and the skateboard and it's sort of the stance. Uh, that, that has a lot to do with it. Why the, well the alligator and the gator skater thing, uh, did they come up with the, the animal that you're drawing or did you which came first, the character or the Gator Skater title? They gave me a list. Gator Skater was the only one I can think of now, but they gave me a whole list of uh, bear wear or something 
usually uh, an animal with a rhyming name, uh, uh, another word that rhymed. This was the one I seemed to key off of, and I got this idea fairly fast for some reason. I don't know. I've always liked the idea of, of that, the cool guy, the kind of boppy guy with the ghetto blaster and the, and the, uh, or the boom box, I guess is what they say, uh, zooming down the street. Uh, it came to me fairly quickly, and I've always liked the gator idea anyway. So now you work in, uh, you draw first with uh, pen, pen and ink and then <coughs> add color to it? Well, the first, yeah, we start off with a fax of the rough idea, which is pencil, a Xerox of a pencil. I fax to them. They look at it, they okay it or modify it. I go from there to, a, to an ink version. I may make a copy of that for myself, just in black and white, <clears throat> and then I'll proceed to color using watercolors, concentrated dyes mm. over the ink. Well, let's go to the next one and see what, uh, what all these things have a story or a challenge to it. Uh, this was done actually uh, quite a while ago, uh, a Channel 4 ad for uh, the Feeling Fine with Dr. Art Uh They wanted to depict a guy just coming, having gotten home and being really uh, bummed, basically, and overworked, uh, as it says here, overwrought. And they wanted that to sort of carry the, the type and the whole attitude of the, what the idea was about. Now, when something like, like this comes along, you go next door and find neighbor Fred and say, Fred, stand on the door like you just had a hard day and freeway traffic was bad. How, how, where does this evolve from? Oh, you know, it's probably an unconscious, you know, assembly of things in, that I've seen in my past, uh, work of art, various artists that I've liked, I've admired. And then I have a mirror in front of my drawing board. Mm -hmm. and Although I certainly hope I don't look like this guy, I, there, are, there are ways that I can look in the mirror, uh, come up with a, uh, an expression, and then just sort of build around it. Now the cloud over his head, that's, isn't that reminiscent of Al Cap and that character uh, that always had the rain cloud over his head? Right. Joe uh, Spritzik or whatever his name was. So you uh, probably have the people who are watching this don't know who Al Cap was, Lil Abner, but right. that still is I remember. a traditional uh, uh, stereotype that we can uh, play with. Right. Uh, black and white ad uh, in, ending up in black and white, so you don't have to go beyond color. You just have to put the personality right. and the the story into that drawing, and right. there it goes. Okay, next. This was a point of purchase uh, color, actually a Xerox of a, a very large point of purchase display I did for Miller Beer for a Thanksgiving promotion. <clears throat> it actually. Uh, the turkey part of it was the top, and then they had photographs of beer cans along the sides, and it was a stand-up display in front of, uh, in the, f the section of the liquor store where the beer would, they s would sell a beer. Uh, a pretty cut and dried job, being that they wanted the turkey with the hat, and they already had sort of a preconceived idea. They wanted their logo on the hat. So my job was to come up with a turkey that looked fun enough and colorful enough uh, that it would get the job done. Now, you're not going to have people call and say that isn't a turkey, that's a pheasant, or you obviously have added some color there to make them more colorful than the right. turkey really is. Right. I think the tail feathers are a giveaway in one sense, and also the fact that, of course, we have a very literal uh, depiction here of what exactly it's supposed to be. Yeah. So. Okay. This was a, a small ad that I did for, uh, uh, to try to illustrate the idea of a guy out of time. He's right at the end of his rope. Uh, so their tagline was, you're floating dead in the water without reliability. And then they go on to describe their products, which obviously will counteract that problem. Now, did the advertising agency tell you what they wanted or just give you that uh, headline and let you they figure did, it out? They, they kind of had a guy in a, a very primitive drawing of a guy in a rowboat row about to go over fall, the falls. So I had, it, what, they, didn't, they didn't have it very, uh, a very dramatic layout. They, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't, really wasn't dramatic enough. So what I tried to do was angle the water in to give you that sort of uh, perspective effect of going over the side. That was the one thing I think I added to this that they did not have that they liked. Yeah. 
Well, the perspective drawing and the way it's forced there is mm -hmm. uh, dynamic as well as yeah. threatening. You only have this much room here to show that the thing goes down a tremendous distance. Yeah. So I tried to do it with the way the water went down. This is a piece I did for Pactel, uh, simply enough just symbolizing uh, everybody, all these businessmen, you know, looking the same on their business phones, doing their thing. I never did get a, a, a copy of how this was actually used. That happens sometimes. You're purposely making each character the same, they're just different in size. I wanted the repeat effect. I didn't want him to go, oh, this guy's doing this and that guy's doing that. And I didn't want to, I just wanted the, the, the domino kind of yeah. little mechanical man feel. The, uh, when you do a character, multiple character, you know, the, these are the same thing, just different sizes. But when you have a character that's the same character that appears in three or four or five different locations or, or positions, is that hard to do or do you have to figure out how that's done to make a... Uh, I just enlarge, I just draw a figure and then I, uh, I duplicate it usually on a uh, reduction scale Xerox and you just fit them in. So you don't, you don't really have to redraw the guy every time. There are, although I could do that, a lot of the, the consideration here is time. Whatever you can do faster is better. Now that brings up the uh, subject that uh, the tools that we use as illustrators, uh, the Xerox machine has become very important because you can make copies and up and down and that's mm -hmm. re repetitive stuff. You don't have to trace it anymore. Take the time to trace it. You can just Xerox it and then work it back into your work. Um, the camera is important. You can go out and take a picture of, of a freeway exchange or interchange and then you can see what that looks like. Uh, a lot of work now is the computer is becoming important. However, as, as it is with this, that you could probably draw this faster with a pen than you could with a computer. If, if that was uh, required, you're going to do it in computer art, I can do it faster with a pen. Yeah, I think right now, uh, as of March 93, I think uh, I can safely say that there isn't a system that I know about that I can draw faster with uh, on a computer than I can just with a pencil on a, skit, you know, a tracing pad. The, uh, the coloration that you're putting there now in the background, uh, is that a bit of art brush in the sky so that you get that uh, blending effect? Right. Airbrush in airbrush. the sky. Airbrush. I said art brush, airbrush. Yeah, so that you're, you're not doing a total airbrush work here, but you use it for in, in some places right. for background or, or right. to help the color out. Anywhere where uh, or mottling of the color or blotching would get in the way. Uh, some illustrators have more of a, of a blotchy free technique. and. And that, I felt, uh, wouldn't really work as well here because of the treatment of, of the foreground being a little bit more even. Okay. This was, uh, I think, a point of purchase display for Caltrans, trying in some of the other work that uh, I, you may not be seeing here, but I've, I had to illustrate snarly this dragon as a big mean old tra uh, dragon symbolizing a traffic jam. Mm -hmm. Well in this one they wanted to show the traffic jam being managed so Snarly's he's cooled off he's not such a big bad guy anymore he's relating to people and now he's taking the bus to the beach. So they wanted to symbolize this uh, in a drawing. When you have as many characters as you have there the driver the old lady the kids in the car how do you go by, back and, and, and make that many characters. Do you, do you think of people you know or you just put noses and eyes and... Boy, I tell you, a lot of these people look the same. Like, this could easily be the father of that kid. She could be the, grand, the, the mother of him and he could be the father of him and who knows. I mean, all my characters I think look the same and a lot of times they tell me, say, you know, it's funny, all your characters look the same. But that's so, part of, then that would right. be style, right? Right, yeah. yeah. So even, even over here, uh, basically, it's a simple style, and I, I don't think about it a lot. And, and if you've got to draw fast, sometimes the, all you want to do is get that head in there. And I haven't sometimes the slightest idea of how they're going to turn out. It's such a nice system. That's the, uh, the thrill of the work. Is to I gotta get this. Go past some of these. This is a, a piece I had a lot of fun doing because it kind of showcased what I like to do and it, it showcased my work. 
gave me a lot of space. This is a, a brochure, a mailer for the, uh, a few years ago, uh, they have this annual Bay to the Breakers run, which is an insane uh, collection of people who dress up. It's kind of like the Hollywood doodah parade. Mm -hmm. So the, the crazier the better. And they gave me all the space to draw these, the lunatics uh, running up to register for this race. And of course, the, the client was the San Francisco Examiner. Now, would they give you uh, pictures of past races so you could see some of the costumes and get ups that these people no, came up with? They, or you just they, just, they just said, John, anything goes. Get it in there. So I just, anything I thought of. The, um, the fold-out concept is, is not new, but that gives you then, like you say, plenty of space to work with. Right. But I thought it was designed interestingly because it gave me a little spot on the opposing pages here, too. Mm. I got a job with uh, Super Shuttle right after they came out and saw this. They wanted me to do a whole bunch of stuff for them, so that was kind of neat, too. How much work do you get from people who say, I saw you work in a magazine, I saw your name on the bottom, uh, do they even know how to get a hold of you then? But well, these people, the reason they did is they called, uh, they, being that they were one of the contributors in this thing, they called the art director, the agency and the art director, and got my name from them. But usually what they'll do is they'll see my work uh, in relation to one of these tear sheets that we showed. Well, you could put a 1-800 number on you know, all of your yeah, artwork right. and say, here I am. All right, rent a billboard. Here. This was an ad that uh, Griffith Homes wanted me to do. Uh, they wanted to show their home, which is a modern, you know, a, a 1990s style home, but they wanted the feel of the, of the 50s uh, Beaver Cleaver family. Now, I didn't really do the Beaver family uh, per se, but I got that kind of 50s feeling with the old 50 Ford back there and the pedal pushers and the hairstyles. And that's what they wanted. Uh, they wanted the real old-fashioned home warmth. Now, to to get that uh, to happen, you're 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 going to fax them a drawing or a sketch so that you can show them this '50s feeling. They may have said that over a phone or over a if somebody faxed you, but uh, now you're going to send them back a pencil version of that so that they can approve it before you go on. Exactly. Uh, I do a a pencil on a regular tracing tissue pad. Uh, much like, yes. Use that. this as an example because yes. this. Well, this is another piece of art, but uh, it's just a piece of tracing paper, heavy, heavyweight vellum kind of tracing paper. I do a rough like this, which I feel comfortable working with a, a B pencil, a B weight pencil on this paper. I Xerox this, which would be that, and then they see it via fax, uh, make whatever corrections necessary, and they say, go ahead and go for it. And then I ink it up. Using if the there was a problem, then they, then, then they would say that uh, by phone or fax, and you make the fix it up and send it back by fax again until they are comfortable. Correct. And then off you go with the, with the uh, finish. Now, with that, that being the f final version of the, of the dragon. Right. This is uh, also, uh, well, camera ready, right? Yes, uh, right. This is ready for color separations. And you send it off to them by, by Federal Express or one of the express companies. Mm -hmm. And then they, they go, it goes to the printer, and the printer goes through all of the scanning and that sort of thing. So you're, you're through by the time it's uh, camera ready. Yes. Right. And then in a due amount of time, then they send this back to you. You, you still own the rights to it, or you own the artwork. Uh, and back it comes. If, um, I'm not sure, what, what was this used for? This was an ad? This was, a, uh, again, a, Cal, a Caltrans piece. Is this a character that's appeared in many of the Caltrans? You were talking about the dragon before. Mm -hmm. Do they own the character or do you own it if, if it appears several times in there? They own the character because they commissioned me to do it and I have arranged and I agreed to for them to buy that out, that character out, and that they would use it only for uh, this purpose of the symbolizing the traffic problem that they're trying to get across. Now, does that give you an advantage when every time they want to use this character, they have to have you draw it? Well, I'd like to think so. There are other artists who could do that, but I guess what they're saying is that, gee, you know, why fix something that isn't broken? 
So in sense. this case, your advantage uh, business-wise to say, I'll, sure, I'll sell you the rights to this uh, with the idea I'm probably going to be doing the additional drawings as they come along. Right. But if some shirt company came and says, yeah, I love that uh, character, I want to put it on a shirt, then it's not yours to deal with at this, at this point, is it? That's correct. What I might have to, do, what I would do is I'd probably modify it significantly. If for some reason Caltrans wanted to come up with t-shirts and put that on there, it's, since they own it, you don't, then you wouldn't get any of the royalties off of that shirt unless they felt somewhat obligated to do that. Correct. The ins and outs of business. Yes, there are different, in different arrangements. You can, you can do, you can uh, do work where by royalties come for every little uh, minuscule use and that and sometimes they're only willing to go a full buyout where a lot of illustrators don't like to do that but uh, sometimes if it's a difference between getting a job or not you just do it you have to on the spot figure it out well it's worth the money now and we'll just let the rest come down the road or, or uh, yeah a full or buyout uh, right a full buyout let's say uh, price on this is two thousand a full buy a full buyout would be they might be willing to pay me 2500 usually, maybe 2800 So uh, that's probably, in a sense, what you might consider losing if, if they did, did that. If, they, if I did that for 2000 and they went. And uh, Well, copyright laws now being what they are, you own the artwork unless you sell it to the company. They have the use one-time use for that year right. of that product of that drawing but if you uh, then make the arrangement to sell it to them then they right. own the rights and they can go on and do with what they except want. they have po's now there are disclaimers and to sign them I mean you wouldn't believe the fine print on them so there's ways they have of going around that yeah well let's go on to the next uh, illustration this was a piece that was kind of fun to do i uh they wanted to uh, illustrate the idea of you know how if you did this through PG uh, uh, Portland General Electric uh, and you did this thing whatever it is with a heat pump which I personally don't know much about heat pumps that your home would be attractive to all your friends and neighbors by virtue of that so they wanted they wanted to show a bunch of people really anxious to get into your house so I I got to draw all these zany expressions you know goofy people with sunglasses and Wiping the sweat off, that sort of thing. Again, more neighbors, right? <laughs> people that you know, right? Uh. Or people that I would, uh, or people that I make up. A lot of them are people that I make up. As a matter of fact, Carl, I don't think there's anybody that I know on here. Then you have to get model releases and go through all that. Right. Uh -huh. The. Um, when they put these in black and white, obviously there's a difference in cost to them when they reproduce it. Uh, and probably a little bit more cost to them if you do it in color. But do you think um, is effectiveness added or subtracted to by doing it in color? You know, that's a good question. I'm not really sure. Uh, I, I think this piece could look good in color. Uh, the reason they didn't, I'm not sure. Maybe it's just a budgetary reason. Or going to go on a newspaper and there's uh, right. a usage, for a lot of. Right, a usage factor. Yeah. Okay. Now, at this point, uh, in, if, if I were interviewing you and you were showing me your artwork, uh, and I, I've seen a number of pages now, obviously I'm noticing the style is the same, whether it's people or whether it's uh, animals or whatever. And, and I'm impressed by the style, so my next thing is I want you to do some work for me. Here are my criteria. I want these people or these animals or this situation. And now you've got to learn yourself into my needs uh, so that if there is a particular thing that shows up here, a car or a crane or something that you have to, you have to do some learning into, right? So that you now say, I have research to do in your company. Um, we haven't seen any of them yet, but it, what do you do when that comes up? The, you rely on photographs? You make sketches of their, their product? What happens then? Well, there's one right here. This is a caricature of an executive for uh, the Quickset company. Now, if, if by what you mean is this is a product, uh -huh. 
I, I, it's, it's loose because this is a very loose, fun thing personally given to him, so it wasn't like I had to worry. He got this in color. I made a copy of this, so this was in full color. But they handed me a brochure of the product, which showed the knob and the key. And I exaggerated it slightly. And with a humorous illustration style, you don't have to be that accurate. You, you just get close to what it looks like, and uh, you're exactly. in the ballpark. Right, so I don't have to do very much with that because they know that I've got a, uh, this real cartoon style in, and that anything they, they give me will be caricatured. Mm -hmm. So just the direction is what I need. I don't need, you know, much, much else. All right, this one with the large, small, and medium-sized animals, that gives you... Uh, now, I would say that looks like a lot of fun to draw, but you probably tell me it's a lot of work because you have to get in and figure it all out. Yes, but it's fun to work. That's fun for me, too. You know, to fe feel like what it's like to be a, a hefty polar bear on a skateboard with a little penguin. And actually, the penguin's quite big here. I could have made him a little smaller. And a larger than usual fish, if you compare him to everybody else. But I needed to make him large in order for him to stand out and put little sunglasses on him. So. This is a piece I did for myself, and uh, for no particular reason, except that I kind of like the idea of, of the combinations of animals. And now that, you know, you could say that was a study, but it, now it's part of the portfolio, so it becomes another sales tool to right. show off. Mm -hmm. Well, all right, so we, we know more about what a humorous illustrator does. Uh, I think you're... Your portfolio is obviously going to show anybody that sits down uh, ability to draw and keep up with the competition. You know, you're going to uh, uh, attract attention because your work is on the level of competition or perhaps above the level of competition, so you get that uh, attention from the potential buyer. After, our, uh, after everything is done and you do the artwork and it's uh, printed and back uh, and you're on to the next the next project or next 14 or so projects in a row. Uh, this is the style you chose way back when and, and you're sticking with it. What, um, what do you see happening to you between now and the time you're not drawing anymore? Are you, <laughs> are you making changes? Are you... That's depressing, Carl. Well, I mean, uh, is your style going on with different things? Well, uh, yes it is. Actually it's always going on. My style now is different from when it was, I believe, significantly uh, five or six years ago. Although in, in my eye it is, not so much in, in other people's eyes. And I think at that point even distinct from where it was five, six years prior to that. So uh, I have a feeling it'll continue to change and maybe not dramatically each, each year, but somewhat. I'd like to think that I'm growing still, you know, and making refinements that make it come off a little better. And of course, there's also the issue of, of the trends. Yeah. You know, illustration, you know, comes and goes in trends, and you've got to be kind of close if you want to do any business. You can't look, I mean, it's great to look like uh, the cartoonist of the 30s when that's in vogue, but if you're looking like the, cartooning, the cartoonist of the 30s and it's not, you're out of work. So. Well, we're out of time. And John, I appreciate you uh, showing us this. We're gonna, I'm gonna personally watch your style evolve for the next 30 or 40 years, right? Yeah, you're great, yeah. <laughs> Get off that depressing note. But I right. uh, appreciate you uh, doing this and I, I admire your style and uh, I look forward to seeing it out there and all of our students coming through, uh, catching up with your uh, level of, of uh, work is what they're trying to do. But I don't know if they'll do that just yet. Thanks a lot. Thanks.